Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I got a real treat for you. We got the 1909 Cubs against the 1970 Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, Pirates pregame. Presented by W.B. Mason. National League matchup with pitchers hitting. And um, this is another of my just random one-off games to put up on the site for your enjoyment. Um, the Cubs had won 104 games in 1909. And the Pirates of 1970 only won 89 games. However, if you remember... The 1909 Cubs are from the dead ball era, so they didn't hit a lot of home runs. But the 1970 Pirates were from a time when home runs were hit at a much more uh, prolific pace. And therefore, I think that that's kind of, uh, that kind of balances the scales a little bit between an 89 win team and a 104 win team. And as you can see on the screen, I will be taking the Pittsburgh Pirates. I'll be managing them. The computer will be controlling the 1909 Cubs. And uh, pitching for the Cubs is going to be Mordecai Three Finger Brown. And for us will be Steve Blass. So let's get on with the game. So there you go. You got, you got Steve Blass's pitcher in the lower left-hand corner. And let me move my my image over a little bit here. Uh, okay, so here we go. And Johnny Evers is the first batter up against Blass. And he gets a double. And no, it's a two-base error. Two-base error by, uh, who was that? He bunts the ball, Sanguian. Manny Sanguian, our catcher, made the air. So now you got Frank Chance up. I think he was actually the manager and the player manager of the team. So we caught the line drive, and then that brings up Sally Hoffman for the Cubs. And he hits it right up the middle. That's going to knock in a run, you would think. And yes, it will. I'm going to stop the runner from advancing to second, and that brings up Wildfire Schulte. I'm going to throw for the runners. Let's see if we can get him. All right. Nice. So he's gunned at second. And that brings up Schulte with the bases empty. And that's strike three. So the Pirates are up. And we're leading off with Matty Alou against Three Finger Brown, who... Had three fingers because uh, I think a couple of his fingers, one of them was mangled in um, a childhood accident, you know, like a wood chipper or something like that. And um, and then one of them was not, um, not disfigured, but kind of like, um, I don't know. But I think it involved two fingers on his hand that made him be able to throw a wicked curveball. And Hebner got a double, so now we've got Roberto Clemente up with one out and a runner at second, facing three fingers. And what's that going to be? And it's going to be a fly ball. Uh, batter was injured. Oh, we're at, well, then we just lost Clemente. Well, that's not good. Is it? Well, to be perfectly frank, it's bad. I knew it! I knew it was bad news. Wait a minute. I have an idea. Maybe if you tell me the bad news in a good way, it won't sound so bad. You don't like that. So Al Oliver's up. And he grounds out. So we don't get any runs. And I have to find another right fielder. Uh, let me move this over here. Um, did 
Did he? No, he didn't play there. Johnny Jeter, he played out there, but he wasn't good. Pagan played right field, but he wasn't good. I guess if I'm looking for somebody good, I'm not going to find him. Uh, Bill Robertson. He's a left field four. So let's see. I What started you? Left and first. So... I, um, hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move Stargill to right, even though, I mean, you know, the rules say I can do this. Move him to right where he'll be a four, and then Robertson in to left in place of Stargill where he is a four, and that's two fours instead of a three and a five, which I guess I would rather have. And, uh, yeah. So there we are. Now we got a terrible outfield. But uh, Joe Tinker is up. Tinker's to Evers to Chance. And uh, he looks like he'll fly out to Robertson, who just got out there. Steinfeld is up. Harry Steinfeld. And he is on. He's got a walk with one out, and Jimmy Shepard is up. After him, he won't be going anywhere. That's going to be a fly ball to a Lou. No, it's going to be a double. It's going to be a double or a homer. Uh, I'm going to stop the other runner, so that's going to be a, another run. So they have a 2 nothing lead now. And Archer, Jimmy Archer is up. I didn't even, I've never heard of Jimmy Archer. Now three finger Brown is up. So hopefully he ends the inning right here. And, and as you can see, we're in three rivers. Love it. No, Brown got it. Man, he got a base hit. This is crazy. Blast is getting his butt handed to him by the, I mean, I, mean, I guess I guess should have expected this, a 104 win team. All right. So we're down three, nothing. Stargill's up. And that brings up Sanguian, who made the, the uh, throwing error in the first state. Anyway. Uh, maybe atoning for it a little bit here with a possible home run. No, triple, triple. I'll take it. Gene Alley is up with a man 90 feet away and only one out. And that's going to be, that's going to knock in a run. I'm going to, whoa, I'm going to say try to advance. And they did, they got him. Man, had to try it. Bill Mazeroski's up, two down, and a man at first. I had to try it. So Blast is back out there pitching to Chance. He's down three nothing. Top their um top, top third, yeah. Mazeroski makes the play. Solly Hoffman's up. He looks like he'll fly out. And that brings up Wildfire Schulte. I think his real name is Frank, I think. And Frank just doubled into the gap. No, wait. Okay, no, it was a fly ball. Fly out. So, nice. Now Blast is up. I mean, I'm going to let him hit. He's... I mean, technically, we're within catching range, but when you figure you're batting against Three Finger Brown, I don't know that that's really true. Uh, Matty Alou is going to ground out to Chance, and that brings up Richie Hebner, who hit a double in the first inning. 
And he got another hit. He's two for two. They can't solve him. And here's Bob Robertson for his first for bat. And he's going to fly out to Schulte. So we are losing 3 nothing. Blast back out to the mound, pitching to Tinker. And Tinker rips a base hit. And he won't be going anywhere because his chance just dropped from 35%. And Steinfeld looks like he's going to hit a fly ball to Robertson. Out. That brings up Sheckard. I mean, you're missing a lot with them. With Clemente being injured, you're missing a lot defensively as well as offensively. And Jimmy Archer. And looks like he will, he might have a base hit. Nope, he's out. So we get out of that inning and Blast put up two zeros after allowing three runs in the first two. And we got Al Oliver batting against Brown. And what is that going to be? That might be a double or a homer. I'm going to say no. We're not going to try to advance him an extra base and Stargell's up. And he strikes out. Oh, no, no, he didn't. Now he does. It brings up Manny Sanguian, our catcher. And he strikes out. And that brings up Gene Alley. Gene Alley looks like he's going to fly out to center. So we still don't have any runs, although we do have four hits. And here is Three Finger Brown to bat against Blast. I'd like to say it's an out, but he was he got a hit the last time. Up. This time, though, he strikes out. That brings up Johnny Evers. And Johnny Evers hits this ball into the gap. Probably a double. Yep. He has a double and Frank Chance is up with Evers at second and one out. And we're going to throw for the runner. Out by a mile. Nice. And so now Chance is up with the bases empty. And it's a good thing, too, because Chance got a base hit. That brings up Sally Hoffman. So a base running mistake by the Cubs. We'll see how really um, critical that is. Did he make? He made the play. All right. So we're out of the inning. We're still losing though. Three nothing here in the bottom of the fifth with Mazeroski up, and he pops out. And that brings up Steve Blass. I'll let him hit. If Mazeroski had gotten, I would have hit for um, Blass, but it's over the head. It's an E6. Nice. So now we got Matty Alou up. And let's see if that can be something. No, it's probably going to be a fly ball to center. And that brings up Hebner, though, who's two for two with a double today. And he gets another base hit. They just can't solve him, but I got to hold the runner. I got 50% is not good odds. And so we've got Bob Robertson up. And that's going to probably be an out. And it is. So we didn't score a run. Potentially came close to getting a run, but we didn't. And Wildfire Schulte he looks like he's going to be on by an error by... Um, by Blass, who pulled um, Oliver off the bag, which is not hard to believe since, as you might recall, Blass had a problem later in his career with pitching and throwing the ball. 
uh, like one of those mental blocks that prevents you from being able to do that. So now with two outs, he's pitching to Steinfeld. And that may be a fly ball. No, it's a single. So Jimmy Shepard's up with a man aboard in two down. And hopefully Oliver can play this, and he does. So we allow no more runs there, and uh, we're still we're still losing three nothing. But now it's the bottom of the sixth. It's getting uh, it's getting late. But that's going to be a hit up the middle by Al Oliver. Gotta love that. Willie Stargell up. We would like a home run, Mr. Stargell. Pops, come on. Hit it out of here. No, he strikes out. That brings up Manny Sanguin, who's one for two with a triple. And he has an error that was crucial in the first inning. And that's a double play. So we uh, don't score anything there. And we've got Blast back out on the mound in the top of the seventh, dealing to Jimmy Archer. And this should be the this is the bottom of the Cubs lineup, and then maybe the first batter. Yep, three-finger brown up. He's one for two on the day. And he is out, and that brings up Johnny Evers at the top of their lineup, who is one for three with the double double on the day, and he gets another hit. And that brings up Frank Chance with Evers aboard, two down. And that's a strikeout. So, again... It's only 3 nothing, but we cannot seem to solve three-finger brown. I shouldn't be shocked about that, but we can. So Gene Alley is up the bottom of our lineup. I probably will hit four um, blasts no matter what. One away. That brings up Mazeroski. And the next batter will be blast, so I will pinch hit for him when he comes up. Mazeroski looks like he's going to fly out to center as well. And now Blast. So we will go to the bench. Um, he is a righty. Ideally, I would like a lefty, but we don't have one. So let's go with Pagan. Well, let's see. I'm going to go with Pagan. He's still the better hitter. So, Jose Pagan up to face. Three finger on him. And looks like he's going to fly out to Schulte. So, now I do need a pitcher. And we will go get one. And you know who I'm going to bring in? I'm going to bring in Dave Justy, because I have a little story about Dave Justy. He um, actually pitched when he um, when he pitched in something like um, Junior Qantas or something like that um, in the, had to have been in the 50s. Um he actually, my father faced him in a game. And my father wasn't a regular. He didn't play regularly, but he could hit. So he was a pinch hitter. And Justy was pitching a no-hitter against my father's team. Whatever that was, Junior Qantas High School. I don't, I don't remember what it was um, in the story. But um, he was pitching a no-hitter against him. And my father um, got a base hit off of him. And broke up the no hitter. And years later, there was something that happened. Hoffman advances to second. There's one out with Tinker up. There was some kind of a function that they were at, and um, and Dick Justy said to him, "You're Bob Zolke, aren't you?" And my father said, "Yeah. How did you know that?" And he said, "I always know." Who broke up a no hitter? Uh, one of who, I always know the names of people that broke up uh, one of my no hitters. So 
just a little interesting story there for you. Steinfeld is up with two down and a man uh, 180 feet away. And now he's 90 feet away. And Steinfeld is still up. And Justy, did he get him? No, he did not. He's safe, and that's the fourth run for the Cubs. Off Dave Justy, he's having a little bit more trouble with the 1909 Cubs that he did with the 1950-something, whatever, Liverpool High School team, uh, or whatever team that was, Junior Qantas or whatever that my father was on. So we're down 4 nothing in the eighth. So basically, at this point, the game is over. You're just tuning in to listen to my... Um, my great announcing and maybe a couple of my stories. Hebner, though, look at the day Hebner's having. He's three for three with a double. That dude is like, man, I've been trying to carry you guys all day, and now he's got something going on here. Maybe a double? No. No, that time he strikes out. Two down and Bob Robertson up. So, I mean, once we lost, I think once we lost Clement one day, it was, it was questionable that we were ever going to come back after that. Um, so, Dave Justy out to face Jimmy Archer here in the top of the ninth. The Cubs don't need anything. They could go one, two, three, and then we have to get four runs in the bottom of the ninth, which seems really unlikely, if, if I'm being perfectly honest. Three finger Brown goes down. Of course, they're not going to pinch hit for him. He's pitching great. And then Johnny Evers, who's two for four with four double out in the day. And he gets another base hit. And will he try to steal? They will. And I'm going to try to throw it out. Out by a mile. Okay, great. But now we're still down four nothing. And this is the very last inning if we don't score four runs. Oliver is two for three on the day. And he pops out. Willie Stargell's up. And Willie Stargell hits this ball into the gap. Of course, you know, not real. He hauls it in. No, he hauls it in. Uh, and Manny Sanguian's up. <clears throat> and that is it. So let's go look at the box score where we got really schooled by this Cubs team. Didn't really work out the way I thought it was going to work out. Um, we, uh, we got six hits. We're six for 33, but he was 10 for 34 with four runs. Hitting. And Brown pitched nine innings, allowed only six hits, didn't even walk anybody, allowed no earned runs, and struck out five. Blast went seven, allowed eight hits, and walked one. Struck out four and allowed two earned runs, three runs overall. And then Justy came on, pitched two, allowed two hits, a run and a walk, or a walk and a run. And we lost four nothing, so... That is going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.